and welcome to Good Morning 30 AM. I'm Julie Brown. And I'm Red Bizard. And we are joined with Charity Barger, <laughs> producer, actress, writer, for Finding Her Way Home, a uh, local movie. Yes. Film you've local been shooting movie. in Holt Florida. Holt, Florida. Where is Holt, yeah. Florida? Holt, Florida is about 10 miles west of Crestview. We'll okay. Most of our shooting up there. We also do some in Fort Walton Beach as well as Milton, Florida. And this is a special story. It is. Tell us a little bit about it. Okay. Uh, the story follows um, Melissa Paxton. Uh, she is a young woman who, uh, uh, at this point in time, she's returning home. She's been gone for 10 years. Uh, she was a victim of rape uh -huh. 10 years prior to that. Um, so she, she kind of just up and left. Nobody knew why. Her family, her friends, her boyfriend that she was very much in love with, she just Nobody left. knew she had gone through yeah. that. Okay. So when she's coming back, uh, she is seeing all these people again for the first time, and they kind of want to understand. Um, so she's kind of dealing with her past as well as trying to um, explain, explain, explain what happened. Yeah. And how did you get involved in this? How did I get involved? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a good question. <laughs> it's definitely it's a hard one to a answer, too. Um, I've actually been doing a film for the last like three years or so oh. out in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and when I came to the area, I was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a lot of film in the area. So um, I kind of just came up with a few stories, talked to some local directors, and this one kind of just you. started that is rolling. So and it's been amazing. And and I Go ahead. No, go right ahead. <laughs> and so now I understand you're you're close to being done we are. with the production. We are. We only have a few kind of pickup shots, which are just little things we missed along the way. Um, <laughs> um, and then that's it. We're we're done. We start post production. Um, so what happens from here? What happens from here? Uh, we kind of want to get the word out, just let everybody know what's happening, and then. Um, and that's about it. You know, once filming has been done and um, they're going to be in post for, I, I don't know how long, about 80 hours, however long that takes long them. It takes. <laughs> uh, it's six months. That's what some people say, but we're trying to do it quickly. Um, we have the big premiere, um, which we're raising money for RAIN, the Rape, Abuse, and Incest National Network. Right, which is, right, which is yeah, what, I was, which what I, I was looking at earlier. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah. When is the premiere? Um, we don't know. It, take, it depends on how depends long it takes. Long post. Post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we were hoping towards the end of the year. So if we can do it that quickly, um, then we will. Now, do you have a production company or a, um, I guess a production company is right, but is there somebody who's carrying the film for you, yeah. releasing it for you, or, or is this all what you need to raise money for as well? Or um, we will be. How does that work? Um, the production company is, is technically um, me. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm financing the film. Um, but uh, we are also putting it in film festivals, and that will be a huge thing to look for a distributor. I guess that's what I meant, a distributor. National. That's the word yes, I was looking for. Yes, distributor, yes. Somebody we'll, who distributes. Got we'll, it. And we'll do that through film festivals. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. And it, all, it is all local it, people that are in the film. Yes, all local actors that's and local kind of crew. Yeah. So, and yeah. is the person that the story is about... Um, is she on, is she been, have you been working with her directly about the story and? Uh, the, the actor that is Melissa. Is, um, oh, is she, is she's. Who's playing Melissa? Yes. Yeah. Are you saying, is it a true story? Y yes. No, <laughs> it's not a true story. <laughs> I, I thought it was a true story. I thought you said it was based no, on. It's based on a few experiences that I went through personally. Oh, and okay. That's so then I guess you are working directly with the person. <laughs> yes, and I'm always Sorry, there. guys, I was confused. <laughs> it happens once in a while. <laughs> So, okay, well, good, very good luck to you, and um, I hope that uh, you get what you want out of yeah, it. And it like you put a lot someone should it. pick it up. And, and now, how long have you been filming for? We've been filming for three months. That's um, all. But, yeah, the director and I, Michael Fletcher, and I have been working on it for about a year. So, from you know, concept to to here, it's been about about a year. So, so that is but it's been fun. It's gone gone by quite quickly. the undertaking, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> yes. Well, when I walk with it, I hope you see am amazing success. Oh, with it. thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you so much for coming by. Thank oh, before you go, do we have a website we can go to? Um, oh, you yeah. can go to my personal website, www.charityambarger.com. Um, our website will be up soon, and I'll let you know through my website. As well as if you're on Facebook, we have a great fan page that the actors and crew go on and talk to everybody, and it's really a lot of fun um so look for our fan page it's finding her way and home. as far so. as the um the rain mm -hmm. uh do you have a website for that as well so that if someone's interested in volunteering or helping or sending money or whatever you can go to rain.org rain.org rain yeah and you can volunteer in that way yeah. okay charity thank you so thank much you it was so very much, much a pleasure to meet you good you luck too. with your film thank you yeah <laughs>
Okay, guys, that's it for today. Amazingly enough, we've had five guests, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again in, I don't know, a month or two. Um, before we go, thank our guests one more time. Or, uh, I'm sorry. We'll thank our sponsors one more time. Massage Envy and Fear Park. And Zoe's Italian Restaurant, Blue Mountain Beach. Sunshine Shuttle and Limousine Service. Woohoo, she did it. Henderson <laughs> Park Inn. Coastal Bank Anybody? something. <laughs> 30 a Radio. Coastal Community Bank. And Enzo's. And of course, the Santa Rosa Golf and Peach Club. Guys, have a great week. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>27 double overtime victory a win is a win but boy it sure wasn't easy the other night over vernon we got that name cardiac kids last year when we came through as uh district champions you know and uh yeah it was uh it was uh what i call a knee melting game my knees were jello till saturday morning sometime mid-morning after that game but uh we escaped and uh escaped with a big one that that you know, put us 71 in the district, and that was one of our goals. Yeah. There was a, a couple of comments you made prior to us going on the air, and I, and I find it really interesting. They did have a full week off to prepare, and they they had nothing to lose. I mean, they didn't have they they couldn't have made any playoff bid or anything like that. And you saw just about everything that they possibly had in their playbook. Well, you know, a lot of breaks went their way. I remember in the first quarter, uh, you know, we got them third and long, and they throw a duck up down there into yeah. the wind. It yeah. Flutters and flutters and flutters. We've got two of our guys right there, and their guy comes down with it. Another time, uh, I remember a kid batting a ball about four yards past the line of scrimmage. It, it was a bad throw, fluttered. He just literally tipped it and rebounded it to tipped himself. It to himself, yeah. Yeah, and uh, made a catch. It was another big play. They pulled out all stops, you know. I mean, a fake punt. On there between the 35 and 40 yard line, uh, they'd had a lot of time to prepare, and they executed an onside kick as well as they could execute it. I mean, and the kick was perfect. Uh, their kids did what they had to, so they had a lot of things go their way. Well, you know, we've talked about that on a couple of occasions already uh, uh, this season about how the breaks go uh, your way or against you one way or the other. But to your credit, to the team's credit, you did battle back in the second half and, and uh, down the stretch made it uh, truly one of the most exciting finishes I've seen in a long, long time. It's exciting, Art. And, you know, it's a big win for us on homecoming. I I had told the seniors the most miserable experience as a high school football player I've ever experienced was losing my senior homecoming. 
and that's just something you don't want to do and you know we don't have the uh luxury of being able to schedule someone that you got a pretty good chance of beating in the district we're in there's there's no weak sisters in this district and so well, they had to come through and play against a you know, very quality opponent. I tell you what, I was really impressed with Vernon. Uh, you know, it's a the small roster, and you guys, you tell me beforehand, and, and anybody that's been to any of the games, you saw more players on the sidelines for South Walton this weekend and everything. But give Vernon a lot of credit. They came in and, and stuck it to you. Uh, you know, again, they had nothing nothing to lose, really. Yeah, and, and, you know, they play in the role of spoiler. They've got to, you know, try to draw something from the end of the season. I mean, they... I can't remember who they play this Friday night, uh, but and it may be Northview. I'm not sure, but I know they end the season. We end our season with Walton. They end their season with Walton, and so uh, you know they've got to try to salvage something out of it to be positive going into next year. I'm not sure I would have wanted to be in the South Walton locker room this past weekend at halftime, but um, out on the field at, at halftime, there were a lot of. Wonderful festivities going on. We're going to take a look at some of the homecoming action from this past Friday night. And now it is with great pleasure that I introduce to you the senior class members of our homecoming court. Our first representatives are Valerie Theobald and Grayson Gilbert. Valerie is the daughter of Jenny Ryan and John Theobald. She's been a member of Anchor Club, Student Council, Dance Team, Cheerleading, Track, Theater, and Volleyball. Valerie has worked as a model and participated in Club Volleyball. After graduation, Valerie plans to attend college to study journalism, broadcasting, and dance. Escorting Valerie is Grayson Allen Gilbert. Grayson is the son of Russ and Teresa Gilbert. He is president of the Drama Club, a member of Anchor Club, and a cheerleader on the varsity competition cheerleading squad. Grayson is an intern at the Seaside Repertory Theater. Also representing the class of 2010 are Isabel Rare and Billy Davis. Isabel is the daughter of Louise Rare and Hector Rare. She's a member of the Seahawks varsity soccer team, varsity softball team, anchor club, interact club, and has a role in the upcoming drama production of The Butler Did It. Isabel also finds time to be a member of the yearbook staff. After graduation, Isabel plans to move back to her home state of California to attend UFC or UCLA and to pursue a career in writing, journalism, and event coordinating. Escorting Isabel is Billy Davis. Billy is the son of Frank and Sherry Davis. He's a member of the Seahawks baseball, wrestling, and golf teams. After graduation, Billy hopes to attend the University of Alabama. Ladies and gentlemen, representing the class of 2010, Isabel Warren and Billy Davis. At this time, it is an honor to announce that the students of South Walton High School have chosen the 2009 Homecoming King, and his name is Grayson Gilbert. Thank you. 
students, you may be interested to know that the senior class did win the banner competition. The car competition in third place was the Interact Club. In second place was the senior class. And in first place was the junior class. Mom, I'm glad you could join us for dinner. Hey, no texting at the dinner table. Not texting, Dad. Just checking my account at Community Bank Destin. You bank from your cell phone? I've just been doing online banking. <laughs> you bank online, Mom? That's not even the best part, Grandma. What about having no, no ATM fees anywhere? <laughs> so when can I open my account at Community Bank Destin? As soon as you finish your vegetable. Community Bank Destin, like no other bank you know. 911, what is your emergency, please? Yes, please help us. I think my buddy, I think he's dead. What do I do? Sir, calm down. I can help you. We'll walk through this together. First, I need to make sure he's dead. Well, I can do that. Hold on a second. He's dead. Now what? Y'all ready for this? Stand back. I don't know how big this thing's going to get. Santa Rosa Golf and Beach Club is nestled between the Emerald Coast's favorite attractions. Sugar White Beaches and thriving woodlands, we have it all. 18 challenging golf holes with newly renovated greens that wind through the pure white sands, pristine ponds, and lush vegetation of the Santa Rosa Beach area. Extending from the Gulf of Mexico inland, Santa Rosa's sheer beauty and golfing enjoyment is a must for the avid and casual golfer. Golf Magazine calls it the purest golf on the panhandle. A good breeze is almost always blowing across the course, making even the hottest summer day a good golf day. And by the way, in the winter months, the golf warms the air, providing a pleasant golf day, even during those not-so-warm winter months. We offer a fully equipped pro shop featuring a great selection of clubs, bags, apparel, and golf accessories. Breakfast and lunch are served daily in Mulligan's Grill, along with a full bar that is moderately priced. The Beach Club Restaurant offers an amazing golf view from any table, plus refreshing outdoor seating on our expansive terrace. The dining room regularly hosts live entertainment and events. Our fun and elegant atmosphere provides the perfect setting for a family night out, lunchtime with the ladies, or a romantic dinner for two. We also offer a full-service bar so you can enjoy your favorite cocktail while watching the most amazing sunsets around. Whether it's lounging around the pool, fine dining with a golf view, or strolling along the private beach, Santa Rosa Golf and Beach Club is the perfect spot for a golf or family getaway. To find out more, call 850-267-1240. That's 850-267-1240. Or go to SantaRosaClub.com. <laughs> Time out on the field was uh, exciting for the parents and the kids and everything, but uh, second half is when you guys got it done, and then into overtime. My goodness, that the way it, it's set up here in, in Florida just it, it just lends for excitement. Well, this <laughs> when each team gets an equal chance from the ten, and I think you go through three or four rounds of that before they start uh, some other tiebreaker. I mean, we've gone three overtimes before in games 
places where I've coached before it's been determined. But, uh, yeah, it's very exciting, and there's a lot of strategy to it. You know, if you win the toss, uh, you want to play defense first. You want to make the other guy show his hand, and then you know what you got to do. Uh, just like, you know, the second overtime, we were very fortunate in that 10-yard holding penalty on first down. It put them back, you know, first and goal at the 20. And, uh, you know, we held them right there. And... Uh, we go right out on first down, and, and, you know, there's no second thoughts. We're going to kick three. Yeah. We get a bad snap. We fall on it. We got another chance right there, you know. So uh, uh, you always uh, would like to be able to play defense first there, and, and I was just glad our kids came through and got points on the board in that first one. That would have made it, who scary. It's funny because uh, this summer I, I spoke with your quarterback, Dennis Smith. I was out at one of the practices, and I was watching down at the other end of the field. I said, man, who is that kicker? He's doing a great job. He says, don't know. We just call him kicker. But your kicker, Mr. O'Hare, really came through for you. Jonathan O'Hare has got a special leg. Uh, I'm telling you, I really expect to see that young man playing on Saturday somewhere in a couple of years because he is – you know, right now as a sophomore and never done much in the weight room, uh, he's pretty consistent inside the 10 with deep kicks. Uh, we don't risk that because inside the 10, you know, against our speed of coverage is dangerous. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm expecting him next year to be consistent in the end zone on all kickoffs, and, and he's got great accuracy, a great pop in the leg, and uh, we're very fortunate to have him in our camp. I think he could have made his uh, game-winning field goal from about 50 or so. <laughs> he really, the adrenaline was flowing, and I know it's going to be flowing again this coming Friday night. Four of your seniors on your team. This is a great way to finish out the regular season. The uh, district is all set, and we'll talk, take a look at all that stuff in a week or so, but this coming Friday night against Walton, senior night, and I know it's important for you, for these young men that have worked so hard for you. Yeah, they've worked real hard. They've been a great group of seniors. Years. They've been a lot of fun, and, and you know they've they've taken us to another level right here in this district. When uh, you know this is their night, homecoming's their night. Uh, they're the only ones that remember homecoming 2009 on this squad, and and they'll certainly be the ones that remember this game Friday night. And uh, you know Walton is. Uh, uh, their record doesn't show the kind of football team they got. Uh, uh, they're a very good football team. They're averaging nearly 27 points a game, and that's more than we are putting up per week. But yet they only have two wins to show for their season, and, and uh, you know it's going to be a very tough challenge for us. 7 o'clock is the kickoff back here at South Walton High School. Probably the last home game of the year, just the way the brackets are set up and things are, are going to probably work out. But uh, we'll look ahead to that next week. We hope to see you at South Walton High School this coming Friday night. 7 o'clock is the kickoff. For head coach David Barron, once again, I'm Dennis Dumbler. You have a good one. Hello. Where are you? I told you not to call me at work. You're at work? It's Saturday. We've been waiting for you since sunrise. We got all these reports. Oh. He's not coming! Oh, come on! It's Saturday. Real good, Steve. Real good. We were biting this morning. We were biting this morning. A reminder from the Bad Blue Light. Premium beer imported daily from Canada, where good times, great friends, and greedy fish are waiting. Come on up. <clears throat> Oh, uh, hey, hey, what are you doing? Just, you know, housekeeping. Really? Well, we've been bounding playfully through the woods since 6 a.m. Dust. We get the phones up at 5. I intended. Oh, you see the irony here? I'm not even buying this. I I'm sorry. Hey, you got that right. A reminder from the Bat Blue Light. Premium beer imported daily from Canada. The good friends, good times, and the great outdoors are with you. Come on up. Good evening, Red Bizarre here reporting for 38 Television. I think it's time for a weather report. We're here in Key West, Florida for Fantasy Fest 2009. We're at the Pet Masquerade at the Casa Marina Hotel, and it is absolutely beautiful. There's a few little Simpsons clouds around, maybe threatening to spit on us a little bit. Yes, that's an official meteor meteorological, yeah, like I can say that. Meteorological, still can't say it. Anyway, it's a weather term. The sunset is gorgeous. We're having a great time. I understand tomorrow we're in for more of the same. The temperature is approximately 89,000 degrees. 
going on about 85 degrees. We're looking for an evening cool of about 79. So hopefully you're having a good time. I know I am reporting from Key West for the Weather Channel and 38 Television. See you soon. Sue and Steve Reeves find lots of joy in their music. And abounding joy in their family. But unknowingly, something was missing. It took a simple twist of internet fate to find out what that was. Sue was clicking around online one morning and came upon a situation that would touch her heart. It was the face of a creature in trouble. There was this black and white puppy that sort of reached out of the out of the um, TV and grabbed me. <laughs> so I just, I couldn't say no to that one. And I gave the people a call and said, I would like to help you. I knew that they um, were stuck and they had to probably take the puppies to the animal shelter because they really weren't their puppies. They, uh, Stray had had puppies in their backyard and they were trying to find homes for them. And, um, but they were up against the wall and they needed to um, move quickly and probably end up taking them to the animal shelter. They were born under a truck. <laughs> at this point, Sue did not intend to keep the puppy. We took the puppy, and, and we really, at that point in time, felt like we were rescuing him and that we would help find him a home. We really weren't sure if we could, you know, with our lifestyle, keep him. And um, within two days, we um, decided we actually got a hold of the people here at Aliqua, and they, they said that they would take him in, thank goodness. and. Um, but over the weekend, we couldn't, we couldn't handle it anymore, and Olivia and, Olivia and I just decided we had to have that puppy. We just couldn't live without him, right? <laughs> so the family came back to Aliqua, where according to animal care guidelines, the puppy was in quarantine prior to joining the general animal population. Hey! Hi. Shelter manager Kitty McFadder cleared the way for the much-anticipated reunion. Yes, you are ready. Yes, you're ready. And you're a pretty baby. I've been hearing you talking all morning. You've been talking all morning because you're ready to go home. Oh, yes, you're precious. You want your baby? There you go. <laughs> Olivia was thrilled to finally hold her new puppy. The two days away from him seemed like an eternity. He's really, really cute, and I think he did get a little bigger. <laughs> You're going to come home again. A new pet is quite a responsibility, and the Reefs had a lot to consider. They are musicians and frequently take their band, Coconut Radio, on the road. Uh, a lot of it had to do with the, 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 the puppy's best interest. Uh, if we were going to be able to spend enough time uh, and uh, give the kind of care and love that it needed. Uh, we've had many dogs over the years. Uh, uh, until recently, we had a dog for the last 12 years who was an amazing dog, and, and um, one of the things that drew us to this present dog is that there's the same sort of expression in the eyes of this dog. It was almost as if our old dog had come back and in a different form. The puppy is now called Eli and is living a wonderful life with his new family. Many of the family's friends have volunteered for dog sitting duty the next time the band goes on the road. Please join us next time for more Aliqua Animal Stories. And don't forget, we can always use your help. Volunteer, visit, or contribute to the refuge. For more information, call us at 850-880-6399 or check out our website at www.aarflorida.com. Thank you.